It's the Hero Show. Welcome to the Hero Show, everybody, where every week we seek to derive inspiration from the great men and women of, of human life, seeking to become the heroes of our own lives. So welcome to the Hero Show with your host. I am Andrew Bernstein, and you are Robert Begley. How are you doing today, Robert? I'm doing excellent, Andy. Happy to talk about a man who spent even more time in New York City public schools than me. 30 years for that matter, three times uh, Teacher of the Year Award, uh, twice New York State Award winner, and then he walked away. And we're talking about John Taylor Gatto. John Taylor Gatto, I have one of his books right here, Robert Dumbing Us Down, the hidden curriculum of, of, of compulsory schooling. Uh, yes. I have a couple as well, dumbing us down and uh, weapons of mass instruction and underground American educator. John Talagato, I mean, he excelled within the government school system. He stood up against it. He called it for what it was. He pulled no punches. I mean, he was a gutsy, you know, firebrand against the conformity and the obedience and just the mind numbing nature of, of the government school system. So uh, we should, we should, you know, get to the high points. W one, what his main criticisms of the school system were, and two, what his suggested improvements were. You want to start with the criticisms, Robert? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So the criticisms, he goes back to the Prussian model that America uh, followed in the early 1800s, where basically you are, you are a tool, you are bred to just follow instructions, maybe perhaps in like a, la a, a, a factory uh, type environment, no individuality, you need to ask permission to do everything, whether it's get up and go to the bathroom, you and, and later, uh, certainly in the 20th century, you respond to bells, you know, buzzers, uh, there's no clear train of thought. Yeah, like like Pavlov's just, dogs, right? <laughs> like yeah, yeah. Uh, sadly, sadly, right. and he just saw those similarities. Uh, Horace Mann, you know, another absolute villain in uh, in American educational history, who mm -hmm. uh, enforced this idea of of uh, compulsory uh, public education. And that was the, that was one of the main things Gatto was against. It's like young young kids have done so they could do so many things. Farragut he talks about in his book, uh, Farragut age twelve was in on the navy uh, commanding people around him. Okay, can you imagine? He's you know that's like what uh, sixth grade maybe seventh seventh grade. Well, yeah, uh, in the cookie twelve cutter years mentality old? of the government schools. Yeah, that's that's sixth or seventh. That, that's seventh grade. Yeah, that, that that's correct. Amazing. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wait, you just, just, just let, me jump, let me jump in. Let me jump in for a second, Robert. Something that really struck me, you know, because I was just rereading this over, over the weekend. It's been it's been a long time. This was written like 30 years ago, right? Uh, and something that struck me because I just written a book on education myself. When he talks about the bell goes off and you got to run to the next, you know, to the next state, next workstation, I think is, is what he calls it. And yeah, that that's right. Remind me. You know, what does he say? It's like no no work is so important that it's worth completing. You go on to the you on to the next station. So it really struck home for me because for me, you know, I was always a humanities guy. I was never a good math student. Uh, but I knew I wanted to be a writer and I you know, I love literature, I love history. So yeah, it reminded me, I mean in the English class and we're discussing, you know, a separate piece or we're discussing Huckleberry Finn, which they still read back then, you know, or we're discussing the To Kill a Mockingbird, which they also read back then. So, you know, you know a really interesting, but bam, bam, the bell goes off and I got to run off to, you know, my chemistry class. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's not the way to do schooling. You know, you get, you have students who are excited about, in my, in my case, literature, and he's going to go on, you know, to be a writer. I love Maria Montessori's approach, you know, encourage the kids to, to work with the materials that they most love. They need, I'm not a good math student, but you need to know math. So we hold your hand, you know, and, and gently, encouragingly, you get you through the math program, but we're all in favor of you spending your time studying literature and history and later on philosophy, because you're, you're a humanities guy. And we, you know, we recognize that. And it's very, very different. You know, it's very different. And so Gatto is right. Yeah, you know, it's it's the, the government schools, his criticisms are scathing and accurate. 
the government school system in some ways, you know, uh, resembles a penal colony. You know, so anyway, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to get that off my chest. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, you're, to you're totally right. And, and we even have an image. It's, it's anybody can do a Google search, public schools or government schools and jails. Okay, right here, <laughs> Department of Correction versus Department of Education. He talks about, you know, parents these, these days. I mean, he says, who in their right mind would turn over your child to 50, uh, uh, 50, no, 150,000 hours of supervision by a stranger, by strangers with others in the class who were only have one thing in common, they're the same age as you. It's the only time in your life that you're going to be surrounded by people. It doesn't matter if you can read great, uh, if the other person cannot. And in dumbing us down, Andy, this beautiful story of this girl, Marisol, that he, that he talks about. Um, uh, in, in Spanish Harlem, he's teaching and he's just beginning. He's, he's not even, you know, he doesn't even, not even sure he wants to do this. But uh, she's, he has the kids read, you know, go around the, the classroom reading, and it's like C spot run, you know, and there, and C spate run. Yeah, the old, you know, he's the old Dick bored. and Jane, yeah. those the old, Dick, the old Dick and Jane readers, right? Yeah. yeah. And then this girl, Marisol, breezes by the, these lines, and he's like, whoa. And he calls her up. Come up he's like why are you in this class and she says well they wouldn't advance me my brother's in seventh grade and i could read just as well as him so gato goes to the principal and he complains why is this girl marisol in this class and she's like you're a substitute you don't tell us how to do this she's probably memorized that text you know so he says why don't we give her a test you know and gives her the test she gato's not there he sees the girl the next day marisol how, how'd it go she goes, I, I think I did well. I read well, but the, but the principal was really angry with me, okay? Basically saying you, this student is in the right place and, and according to our authority. And she writes this note telling Tagato, basically, you know, you're the kind of teacher who makes a difference. And he, he kept that in his, you know, and that's what enabled him to go on with this career, yeah. early in his career. And it's just a beautiful story from from dumbing us down countless examples he gives it's also a it's a you're right rob it's also a brutal story because it shows the school system doesn't care about somebody's cognitive abilities or where they are uh you know you, you you're seven years old you're you're reading you know at the at the uh, eighth grade level or, or whatever doesn't matter seventh seven years old second grade you're, you're way be, you're, you may be way beyond the, the, the second grade class in, in every academic subject. doesn't matter. Seven years old, second grade. And you're right. It's age segregation, and it's completely irrational. It holds people back. And it not only holds people back, it holds back the best of us, the people who are most ambitious to get an education. And, and even Andy, he, Gatto says there's geniuses in all of us. It's just that we're trapped. And we're pigeonholed into the system. He has so many beautiful analogies. One is uh, uh, fleas. He's like, if you put fleas in like a jar, and you put a container on the jar, they, you know, they're gonna. If you put them in a jar, they're gonna try to jump out. But once they start jumping and banging into the the top of the the container, they're gonna stop <laughs> attempting to fly anymore. You know, and and that's exactly what he likens to the to the government schooling. And I I will make it clear. He doesn't think private schooling later on in his life, because he spent 30 years in, in, in education as such, later on in his life, he didn't even think private schooling was that much better, it, it, that he is totally in favor of homeschooling or even what he would call unschooling. And, and then he gives the examples from the founding fathers to Farragut, all the self-taught, you know, the, the, whether it's autodidacts or taught in uh, by their parents. And that's why, again, he makes this point. Why would you turn over your child for, you know, 15,000 hours to these perfect strangers who, like this principal, doesn't even care about their well-being? And to a government institution that's that's enormous and can't possibly know very much about little Johnny or Judy, you're not nearly as much as mom and dad do, and don't love don't love the children the way the way mom and dad do. It's uh, this is a government agency. Let's not let's not forget it. it's backed by force. The students are compelled to go, and then it's funded by tax money that's robbed from the taxpayers. It's so Gatto in. 1991, after he wins his third uh, Teacher of the Year award, 
he writes this op-ed to the Wall Street Journal and the courage, the, you know, what, why we celebrate his career, his courage is a major factor why we're celebrating this man and, and as it's a life lesson. So he doesn't have a backup job or anything. He writes, he's just fed up he, and he writes this op-ed to the Wall Street Journal and he say, it says, I quit, I think. And then he lays out his all of his disgust with uh, government schooling. And he's like, I can't be part of this anymore. I'm doing harm to these children. And he doesn't, uh, the Wall Street Journal gets back to him and they say, uh, thank you for this essay. And, you know, we'll, we're not going to publish it right away. So the, the, so he finishes out the summer, you know, he's not teaching over the summer. And then he's like, I can't go back. So he ends up quitting. And then two weeks later, the Wall Street Journal publishes. He didn't have a backup plan. He didn't have life savings. Here's a father, the breadwinner. But he was just so disgusted with what he was doing. Then fortunately, he went on to become, a, a, he was a great speaker and an author, wrote several books, you know, many of which we have right here that, that we're talking about. So the idea of this aversion to being a, a part of this, you know, part of this program is that is the hero that's the heroic lesson for me as a takeaway i'm just closing out this segment uh, on on gato's message and how it can inspire us you know we could be courageous we we could stand up against this system make a statement uh the way he did in his life without necessarily having a backup plan if you if you are doing something the broader lesson like i say is is to um is to get out of it and then become a spokesman for change. Again, you know, he was he was so thrilled with the with the explosion of uh, homeschooling that he, that he totally endorsed that. Before we end this segment, we could we can name at least one or two of Gato's recommendations for improving education. We've already we've already cited homeschooling. You know, is what un, no unschooling. Unschooling is an interesting phenomenon. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that it's my favorite approach to education. <laughs> Me neither. I'm mixed on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it can't I'm be definitely worse. Mixed on that. It can't be worse than what the <laughs> than what the government schools than what the government schools do you know do to these kids. But you know, but certainly at home, you know, the presumably and I, I know a number of homeschooling parents. I think this is what John Taylor Gatto had in mind. You know, the bells don't ring. There's not that same cookie cutter mentality. You know, a number of a number of parents I know are very good homeschoolers. And they, they, they're teaching the children of different ages, you know, the children they're not all segregated together by, by age. The bell doesn't ring if we're if we're enthralled we you know, we're reading you know a, a a great novel let's say so we'll put off the math or you know till later or even tomorrow because we're so caught up in this great literature when there are tasks worth completing and i think john taylor gato understands that and encourages it yeah yeah great point andy and i'll just close in his weapons of mass instruction he writes a, a letter to his granddaughter so Grandpa John's reading, uh, real learning index. So we talk about what is he uh, about? W what is an actual education entail? Self-knowledge is the first thing. Knowledge of yourself. Observation is another one. Feedback, getting feedback from testing things out. That's like a, a great way to learn whether something is working or not. Uh, analysis. Uh, he's asking, or can you provide prob new, new problems and solve different problems instead of regurgitating what the teacher's saying? Um, expression, are you able to use your own, say these things in your own point? Uh, judgment, and last, adding value. Like, can you add value? And these, these are things that an actual education should be, and how many of them um, happen in schools today? This is the Hero Show brought to you by uh, Objective Standard Institute. If you like what you're watching, please click share and like and, and get uh, the word out there. Uh, this is a battle. This, what we're talking about, what John Gatto faced was an incredible ba battle. Born, uh, what was it, 1935 in the Pittsburgh area, not far from another educator we recently covered, David McCullough. So Gatto goes to high school there, college, he goes to Cornell, he goes to University of Pitts, uh, Pittsburgh, um, Columbia, City College, Hunter, Berkeley. So many, you know, incredible schools uh, he goes to. And 
Andy, this is, I don't know if you've seen the movie School of Rock, <clears throat> but his career gets started <laughs> just like School of Rock. His his uh, his roommate was a substitute teacher. That was, that was Jack Black. Jack Black. <laughs> yeah, right? Jack yeah. Black. Great film. <laughs> so just like Jack Black, his roommate is a substitute teacher, temp, as, as, as Jack Black called him. And... Gatto steals the guy's ID and teaches. He's like, ah, let me let me go and try this, you know, and goes and teaches this class, and it's like a complete mess in New York. This is New York City, but he's he's intrigued by it, and then he applies to get uh, you know certification to become a teacher. This is like 1960, 61, and uh, ends up you know uh, teaching in New York City schools, mostly uh, Manhattan, whether Upper West Side for uh, calling back Andy to the to the the wealthy students in Columbine and then also to he had similar wealthy students in New York City and then the absolute lowest uh, class whether Spanish Harlem or or Harlem as such and so his point was he had he had a wide range of students who he taught as far as like economic and and uh, racial backgrounds and his point was it does not matter that does just ability and the and thwarting the ability is what the system is set up uh, ability of students is what the system is set up for. You know, economic class is enormously secondary uh, in this regard. Uh, gender, race, nationality, well, you know, language, even that is secondary. What what matters is the, 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 the distinction between encouraging the kids independent learning or discouraging it and, and making sure that they obey and, and conform. That's the key. Yeah, and and free will also is a main a main thing that uh, that Gatto advocates, and he says is squashed in the school within the school system because again you need permission, and and you're you're basically conditioned over the course of of, of these many years. But <clears throat> let me give one real good example, and this is from his. He has so many stories, like I said, in in dumbing us down, uh, uh, Marisol. But in Amer uh, American education, he talks about these eighth graders in a school uh, 44, um, PS 44 on the uh, intermediate school, 44 on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. You have Columbia University, St. John the Divine, uh, Lincoln Center, uh, Central Park, all these well-known institutions and then you put these schools there. Now, 44 was actually- Great place. Your favorite place, Grant's Tomb. Don't leave that up. <laughs> yeah, Grant's tomb. <laughs> yeah. So these uh, Riverside Church, they, there's these uh, real known institutions. And then he taught at these different high schools where they were like jails, where kids were getting arrested on a regular basis and they were selling drugs and taking drugs and, and doing all these things. So you have this little jail, like right in the middle with these adolescents, right in the middle of all these historically incredible uh institutions you know uh, um you know lincoln center uh, columbia university etc so so anyway this school i rob it most of these kids if not all of them coming out of upper middle class to wealthy families and they still they've had it with the school system they've been so beat down by you see the rebelliousness the turning to drugs most of these kids you know, the upper middle class wealthy families a lot of their parents are, are, are well to do because they're very well educated. They're they're very intelligent. They're very hardworking. That's how they that's how they made their money. <laughs> they could afford to live on the Upper West Side. But these kids, the, but the parents made the mistake to send them to the government schools. And these kids, you know, their brains have been stifled. And see how many of the you know how many of these smart, wealthy kids turn to drugs. Like you said, it's 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 pandemic it's pandemic and it's pandemic in the in the suburban schools isn't the suburbs but in the wealthy area affluent areas drugs are pandemic and that again that's a sign that's that's a sign of the, the these rebelliousness of the kids is a sign of how angry they are at the school system and that you know that that, that they don't find fulfillment in their education like they could and they should i'm sorry i keep I yeah. getting excited yeah but, I know, I know. So here's a good example, though. One of the workarounds that Gatto did was he created these independent studies programs where kids would actually, you know, deal with the real world and try to solve real world problems. 
So 1981, after John Lennon is assassinated right outside uh, his home, Dakota, 72nd Street, uh, Yoko wants to build this uh, Strawberry Fields tribute to him right across the street in Central Park. I've been there hundreds of times. And the Parks Commission is saying no. They, they basically voted it down. They, they were like, no, we're not we're not going to allow any changes, you know? So it's one bureaucracy that Yoko is facing. So Gatto gets three of his eighth grade girls, okay? And he says, why don't you, why don't you um, come up with this petition? Get like 15, 5,000 signatures uh, in favor of th this Strawberry Fields. And the girls go, <laughs> they go to town. They get the 50, the 5,000 signatures um, basically it gets passed. It, it becomes a media story. Let me, let, let me jump back in again. This is the 1980s. There's no internet then to, by means of which to, that it's much easier to get a petition. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's difficult in 1981, whatever, whatever year this was in the 1980s. That's a lot of work. These kids, a lot of work. These kids had to put in to get 5,000 signatures. Yeah. That's right. And for, but it's for, it's a practical application that everyone had buy-in, you know, there's no resistance here. Like Gatto saying, no, you, you can't do that project. I don't like John Lennon. I don't like Yoko. You know, no, right, it was right, like, right, right. You, you go, go for it. You know, when, when it finally gets passed, Yoko wants to hold like a part, she's having a party and she invites the three girls. You know, I think she just wrote to Gatto saying, you know, thanks a lot, but, but send me the kids, you know? And so here's an example of what, what eighth graders can do in, within the public school system, okay? If given Gatto carves out this independent studies program. Now, of course, this is not, you know, this is not a final solution, but this is a means to transitioning. Let's emphasize the word independent you know, a study, right. meaning use your own mind, come up with your own ideas, knock on doors yourself and not have this, you know, incredible group think, which, um, you know, we haven't even talked about the dangers of group think in, in the classroom setting as well. So, so that's just one of his successes in going outside the system. The untapped talent that exists outside of this social stratum that the, that is confined, you know, that is completely confined. Let me just get one quote uh, here uh, on his, um, from his uh, Dumbing Us Down. He says, I've noticed a fascinating phenomenon in my 30 years of teaching. Schools and schooling are increasingly irrelevant to the great enterprises of the planet. Nobody believes anybody Nobody believes anymore that scientists are trained in science classes or politicians in civics classes or poets in English classes. The truth is that schools don't really teach anything except how to obey orders. Well, yeah, that is certainly true in the government schools. And remind me, speaking of independence and entrepreneurship, I saw, you know, these accolades for, for Montessori schools from various entrepreneurs, one of whom was Jeff Bezos, you know, who I disagree with on this, that, or the other thing. But Amazon is a brilliant company. It's absolutely a brilliant company. And Bezos said, you know, what, 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 those early years of Montessori training encouraged him, you know, to think autonomously, to be self-reliant, to, to be an independent person. He gives a lot of credit uh, to that. And that's exactly what the government school system stifles. That's exactly what John Taylor Gatto decries about the government school system and why he's, and in this regard, at least on the same page as Maria Montessori in, in encouraging the, you know, the, the training, the training of uh, the teaching, training is the wrong word, right? But encouraging children to think independently and, and think and, and do and work independently. And I think that is, that is a, that is a great lesson and and that's uh, that the government school system you know militate against that and that's the that's the worst of their evils of, and, and why so many people's minds are stunted and why some of the brightest kids are in, you know, filled with rage of, of, about this. I'll wrap this up with a with a sad uh, story of Highland High. It's in the suburbs of New York City. It's so wealthy that the students would bust the chops of the teachers because they the students would drive in with cars that were like so much <laughs> superior than the teachers that they would make fun of them okay <clears throat> so gano's invited to 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 talk to this and he figures they're the spoiled brats like you know like every other wealthy uh uh 
school that he's gone, neighborhood school that he's gone to. And he's saying much of the things that we've said, Andy, that we've already covered, you know, how you should be independent in your thought, you should come to your own conclusions, and you should f find a way to create value, all these things that proper educations do. <clears throat> And he's saying this in a matter of fact tone. He's not even getting animated the way you and I are getting fired up. He's like saying this in a monotone, just like reading it off off a lectern. About half an hour into his talk, uh, the door opens and three cops come in, one with a bullhorn, saying this this uh, lecture is now over. And Gatto's like, what you know, what's going on here? And they, he just keeps talking, and they're like, "This lecture is now all, all finished. Stop talking, and you, and leave the leave the room." So they're really showing this, you know, this show of force. And uh, Gatto's wondering what's going on. Andy, the principal of the school, was sitting in the audience and was so threatened by what Gatto was saying, he called the cops to come in and have the the event canceled. Okay, and they even had planned a, an adult meeting with the with the parents afterwards, and even that was canceled because it was on the school's premises. So here is the adversity that this man is facing in his life, where even simply to go out and and talk about alternatives to this uh, system, they don't even have the courage. He's like the, the principal could have just come up and said, you know, we think you're crossing the line here, and uh, let's wrap this up. No, the guy goes into his office and calls the cops on him. I mean, to 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 forcibly end uh, this discussion. Yeah, the, that well, that's unbelievable. That unbelievable. That shows how terrified the powers that be in the school system are of anybody and that's encouraging independence amongst the students it's like encouraging revolution you know in a in a totalitarian state that's how that's how this principal responded you know like he was wow wow that's wow so sad so uh, so just finishing off his life, he he this, he lived into the two uh, thousands, you know, eighty. I think he was like eighty three. Yeah, two thousand eighteen. Uh, he had a website. <clears throat> yep. He had he had a couple of strokes in two thousand eleven, uh, which slowed him down. But he was going right up until the end. And I just, you know, I'm amazed at this man and what he's done. And I was in high school when the Pink Floyd song, Another Brick in the Wall, came out. And that's like what exactly this man is against. It's a, that's all the students are is, you know, they're bricks in a wall. And he want, God wanted to smash those bricks and, and just unchain the human mind to go on to uh, incredible success. Because his point was, that so many uh, uh, individuals does not matter race color creed wealth economic status people have free will and if they're unchained they can create incredible things uh branson bezos among others hey he teach uh, leave the kids alone right <laughs> that's right <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so that's if anybody not from that's Pink Floyd, but um, that's right. yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Bezos. I mean, not be, yeah. Bezos is a hero too uh, in, in business, but yeah, Gato without a doubt a business in the fund a hero in the fundamental field of education, yeah. the most basic and important field of all. And so we salute we salute him, yes. Robert, and all and any of the other educators mm -hmm. out there like him who seek to encourage independent thinking in their in their children and, and, and students and throw off the mind-numbing conformity and uh, demands for obedience of the government schools. So yeah, yes. everybody out there in Hero Land, I would you know strongly recommend like like Robert's doing, read 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 uh got Dumbing those books, down. Dumbing us down. Quick read. Dumbing us down is yes. Yes, mm -hmm. short, sweet, very readable. Well, not so sweet in many cases, but very readable and, and informative. <laughs> and um, mm -hmm. and we'll be back next week on the hero show yes. you know with more uh, heroes looking to looking to gain inspiration to be the heroes of our own life so have a great day everybody Perfect. strive to be strive to have a heroic day and let's be the heroes of our own lives so see you next week once again on the hero show <laughs>